haters. I'm doing deals like the majors. Ice cream sneakers, I signed my first skater. So you could pay three and buy yourself some babes. Bulletproof on the t-shirts. Because okay, number three asks us to simplify the following to an expression involving a single trig function uh, with no fractions. Okay, so we're given this like jumble of mess and we're asked to kind of simplify into one term or into one one of the six trig functions that we've learned, right? So the first thing we can do is rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. That's usually a, a pretty good way to start uh, just because we're more familiar with sine and cosine and everything else, like I said, all of the trig functions are built off of sine and cosine. So secant, for example, can be written as one over cosine, okay? So now we have one over cosine t minus cosine of t, and this is all being divided by a sine of t. So what we can do now on the top is get a common denominator, right, for, for this uh, subtraction here. So 1 over cosine t minus, and then we're going to multiply top and bottom by cosine. So we get cosine squared over cosine, right, and then divided by sine of t. So we can combine the top, so we have 1 minus cosine squared t over cosine t and then being divided by sine t. So the top actually simplifies to just a sine squared t because of the Pythagorean identity that we remember. Uh, let me just draw a little side note. So cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. So if you subtract a cosine over to that side, the, the cosine squared, we just get sine squared by itself, OK? So now we have this going on. And make sure you know which fraction is which. Um, that's always good to know, right? So we have that being that top fraction being divided by a sine. Okay, so we can flip the bottom because this is like a sine over one. So we can flip that bottom uh, fraction there. Okay, so sine squared t over cosine t times one over sine t. So one of these can cancel out top and bottom. So we just get sine t over cosine t, and we recognize this as just tangent, right? So that's, that's what you have obtained from this whole entire problem, is that this thing is just equivalent to saying tangent of t, okay? Okay, so number four asks us to prove the identities, and this should actually just be identity, okay? Because uh, there's only one here, right? So the first thing we're going to start with is recognizing that on the left-hand side, we see something on top that can be factored, all right? And uh, we're just going to kind of treat cosecant and sine, in this case, as kind of just like variables. They're just things that we're going to move around, right? So the top can actually be factored into, because we have a difference of two squares, right? So this is like saying cosecant x minus uh, sine x times cosecant x plus sine x, okay? And you can always check this by foiling out again. Uh, and you'll get the same thing, alrighty? And on the bottom, we have this cosecant x plus sine x, which can conveniently cancel with one of that one of the factors on top, right? And on the right side, we still have this cosine x times cotangent of x, alrighty? So now on the left, we have cosecant x minus sine x, and then is equal to cose cosine x cotangent x, okay? Uh, so first of all, the right side can be uh, simplified into saying cosine x times, and cotangent is cosine over sine, because it's the flip of tangent, okay? So the right side simplifies into cosine squared x over sine x. So maybe that'll be a guide, and we can match up the left side to, uh, to match that, right? So cosecant x, that's the same thing as saying 1 over sine, Right? So if we have 1 over sine x minus sine x, we can get a common denominator. So this is where we're at right now. Let's continue this on the next slide. 1 over sine x minus sine x is equal to uh, cosine squared x over sine x. Let's just keep proving this, or uh, finish the proof of this. So let's get a common denominator on the left-hand side. Uh, so we'll say 1 over sine x minus sine squared x, because we're multiplying both top and bottom by sine x, is equal to cosine squared x over sine x, okay? So on the left-hand side, we can combine the top. So 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x due to the Pythagorean identity. So on the left-hand side, we get cosine squared x over sine x, which matches exactly what we have on the right-hand side. So we are done. This, uh, and thus, we have proved the identity that we started with. 
Alright, so that concludes our practice problems video on the section on other trig functions. Um, I hope that helps, and good luck on your homework. <laughs>